What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one it's my team selection for game week 13. So I'm going to show you how the team is shaping up, thoughts on transfers, captaincy and all the flagged players as well. And I'll quickly show you how I did in game week 12. So if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And just to let you know, this video has been sponsored by Surfshark VPN. All the links you need to get signed up are in the description below, as well as up to six additional months for free. More on that to come later on. So let's start with a quick look back at game week 12, which actually went pretty well for me. I finished on 78 points total, which was enough for another green arrow. That's now my fourth one in a row. And I went from like 595k to 482k. So I'm inside the top 500,000. Obviously, I wished I was higher up than that, but I'm pretty sure I'm ahead of where I was this time last season. And I ended up finishing inside the top 50k. So I think it's a good spot to be in, considering we've only had 12 game weeks. There's lots more to go, lots of points to be gained. The majority of those 78 points came from two players so i had salah captain on 32 points and harlan got 16 in that pretty ridiculous game against chelsea the penalty that a lot of people think shouldn't have been given the assist for the rodri goal as well and the goal that went in off his ass basically so it wasn't the perfect way to get 16 points and i'm sure people that don't own harland are a little bit frustrated but for those of us that have got him happy days indeed uh, the other players that chipped in saka with five points watkins with six and my transfer in was saliba who got nine points against burnley did lose the clean sheet but scored a goal from a set piece or, or from the corner that came in that all sounds good. The problem is I took out Simakas to get him, and obviously Simakas got 15 points. So I'm actually six points down on that move. But I think without hindsight, if I'd asked you who is better to own for the next four weeks, Saliba or Simakas, I think most people would have said Saliba. So I'm pretty happy with that move in general, even though overall it lost points. I also took out João Pedro and got Cameron Archer in. So that allowed me to have a bit more money to spend elsewhere, and I've still got a little bit in the bank even though I upgraded Simicast to Saliba. So I'm pretty happy with that move. I don't need Simicast this week. He's got Man City away. And I'm hoping he'll miss at least one of the games in the next three after that. It might be that he plays all of them, still gets attack and returns, in which case it will look like a big mistake. But right now, I'm still pretty happy with that move. Everyone else blanked. West Ham have been poor. Ariola got two points. Gay conceded three times to Everton. Obviously, Gabriel in that Arsenal game, against Burnley, didn't get the clean sheet and no attacking returns. I will say, up until the point Saliba scored, I watched that game. I would say that Gabriel was a bit more threatening, so hopefully he can get his own goal. No, not an own goal. Hopefully he can get a goal of his own over the next few matches. Cash with two points. Matoma didn't start against Sheffield United. Super frustrating. And obviously Son blanked without Madison. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. The only downside really was that i benched palmer who got another penalty against man city and what was it like the 93rd 94th minute and generally i will always play the attacker over a defender and i did play 4-4-2 this week i think the reason for that was i had jao pedro in my team for sheffield united at home because of the fixture over palmer so i was playing a 3-4-3 with simicas on the bench i think so once i bought saliba in for simicas i just kind of looked at it that saliba was better than obviously Jao Pedro, which meant I played 4-4-2. I never really went back and thought, well, maybe I should play Palmer ahead of Gay or Gabriel or something like that. But to be honest, I don't think, again, without the hindsight, that was necessarily a bad move. Although benching penalty takers is not something I like to do. Anyway, it's done. That was his fourth penalty, uh, fourth penalty for Chelsea in six matches. Will I bench him for game week 13? Let's take a look in a minute. So I'm happy to say that this video has been sponsored by Surfshark VPN. What's a VPN? A virtual private network that's going to keep your online identity safe, your personal data away from big companies and cyber criminals, and let you change your real location to virtually any other country in the world. So I find this useful because I live in Ireland, and sometimes I'll be on social media wanting to see a football clip, and it gets blocked because of my location. A VPN sorts that out, and sometimes I just straight up like watching streaming services from other countries. So I've actually just returned from traveling to the UK to visit family and while i'm abroad i tend to use a lot of public hotspots for my laptop for my phone and having a vpn means my data is protected from everyone else that is using that same hotspot so to make sure you're protected online and to change your real world location make sure to download surfshark vpn now there's an exclusive black friday deal at the moment with up to an additional six months for free i've got a link in the description below and you can use the code fpl surfshark also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's no risk to try it either get it downloaded now 
So going into game week 13, I've got one free transfer and 0.5 million in the bank, which I am going to need for the transfer that I'll discuss later on. In terms of game week 13 in general, it's one of those where, at least for me, the first 11 in the squad doesn't look great because a lot of the players have got away games. And in my first 11, I've only got two home fixtures and one of them is Liverpool. So it's not ideal. But having looked at what the squad looks like over the next few weeks, it looks pretty decent. So there's no need to panic about game week 13. Is it going to be high score? And it doesn't necessarily look like that will be the case. But I think from 14 onwards, that will change. So I'm not particularly worried about the fixtures that most of my players have got. And obviously, a lot of people are in um, kind of similar positions as well. So in goal, I'm always going to be playing Ariola while I've got him and Turner. Because obviously, Turner's lost his place. I don't think Burnley away is a bad fixture for West Ham. But I'm not particularly expecting anything. I know a lot of people are considering now getting rid of Ariola or upgrading Turner. And I'm definitely on board with that if you've got the spare transfer and the money to do it. But I just think... When I look at my squad over the next few weeks, there are moves that I want to make, and I'm not sure the goalkeeper is going to suddenly move to kind of top priority, especially with the fixtures that West Ham have got. All it takes is a few saves in one game, a couple of bonus points here, and all of a sudden he looks a lot better, especially when he only costs 4.2 million. So if I do get some money to upgrade Turner to like a Flecken or a Sanchez or someone like that, then I'll do it if I've got the spare transfer. But I'm not, it's not that I'm not worried about West Ham. I just don't think from an FPL point of view it makes a lot of sense. Um, making that move so I'm probably not going to do it at least for now in defense I've got Mark Gay against Luton away and I've got Gabriel and Saliba against Brentford away do I think the chances of an Arsenal clean sheet are that high this week not really because I think Brentford are just a decent attack in general even without Ivan Tony if you look at their non-penalty expected goals so even if you take out the penalties that Mbermo's had, they're like top five attacks so far this season. Will that continue for the rest of the season? We'll have to wait and see. But that is not going to be an easy game for Arsenal. But it's better to play those two than Charlie Taylor for Burnley against West Ham at home or Matty Cash away to Spurs. I know obviously Spurs are missing Madison, but I still think they're fully capable of scoring at home against that Aston Villa defence. So it's just a case of playing my best players as you do every single week and that happens to be two Arsenal defenders against Brentford and I've spoken about this a lot during the international break there's not a huge amount of really good defensive fixtures from players and teams that you'd want to target for FPL so there's just no point worrying about it and it's not nice to have this kind of game week after an international break where you're going into it thinking it's probably not going to be fantastic but you always get these type of game weeks it's all about it's all about the points you can gain over a period of time rather than just in one week. So I'm definitely going to play both of those. Obviously, some concerns about when Gabriel might next get rested, but I don't think it's going to be in a game like Brentford away. And Gay obviously just conceded three goals to Everton, but I do rate that Palace defence in general. I don't think Luton, you know, when they're playing at home, are easy to play against, but Crystal Palace defence is pretty decent. And again, it's just, is there a better move to make? Probably not. And with Mark Gay, he does have... A couple of good fixtures after Luton away. So it's, well, it's West Ham away in 14, but I know already that I can bench him that week. And then in 15, it's Bournemouth at home, and I'm more than happy to play him in that fixture. And after that, they do get rough, the fixtures for Crystal Palace, but I've got a plan to kind of get rid of him or bench him later on anyway. So not particularly worried about that. For now, he stays. So yeah, defense not looking great, but there's not much I can do about it, I don't think. So I'm back to a five-man midfield this week. I've got Matoma against Nottingham Forest away, who's currently flagged, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I've got Salah against Man City away, Son against Villa at home, Saka against Brentford away. So I am now tripled up on Arsenal with Saka, Gabriel, and Saliba. They're the only team I'm tripled up on. I am blocked from getting a second attacker, but I don't think that's a huge issue. Like Jesus, Nketiah, Odegaard, just not on the radar at all. And someone like Martinelli, his price is very similar to Bowen. And if Bowen was fit, I would just prefer to have him anyway. So getting a second Arsenal attack is not really on the radar anyway. And I discussed yesterday when I was talking about people maybe transferring Saliba in, that after the next three fixtures for Arsenal, they've then got between 16 and 18, Villa away, Brighton at home, and Liverpool away. So it doesn't mean that I'm going to definitely sell one of my Arsenal defenders but it is a possibility if i get there and i've got the spare move and there's someone else that looks decent over that period with better fixtures i will look to potentially move one of them on which would obviously free up that spot but i don't think that's going to be a huge issue and then i've got palmer against newcastle away so one decision is whether to play palmer or archer now archer generally is a worse fpl option than palmer we know that Palmer's always going to start. He's got penalties. His underlying numbers are good. But Archer, of course, has the fixture, Bournemouth at home. But I think given that 
Chelsea look like they're on the up at the moment and Newcastle are maybe struggling a little bit, I'm probably going to play Palmer, even though, despite all the injuries for Newcastle, I don't think going to St. James's Park is ever going to be easy. So I'm not completely sure about that. But right now I am playing Palmer. Salah definitely stays. Man City away, not a great fixture on paper, of course. In, in fact, it's probably the hardest one you'll have all season. But Salah's record against Man City is pretty good. Not enough where I feel like I want to captain him. But if this was the home game, so if they were playing Man City at home and everyone else had the same fixtures they do this week... I would consider captain him. So it's quite close there. Um, with Salah in general, obviously you've got African Cup of Nations coming up in January. So he will have to go eventually. I am kind of open to doing it a bit earlier than that, like maybe ahead of game week 18, because there is a blank to deal with and selling him to someone a bit cheaper, like, I don't know, like a Bowen or uh, Mbermo or Eze or diaby or someone like that would give me the funds to upgrade archer to a much better forward and although getting rid of salah won't feel great it might make my squad overall better i don't want to do that but it is something that i'm open to doing either way when we get to african cup of nations we'll discuss who to move him on for um saka stays i don't think he's really delivering what we would have expected so far this season in terms of how many points is he on let me see here midfielders uh, so he's fifth with 71 points. So he's just behind in Burmo, Bowen, Son, and Salah. So it's not like he's had a bad season, but it still feels like he could be doing more. But I think because he's nailed and the fixtures that Arsenal got over the next three are pretty good, I've got to keep him. I think, I think with some players like Saka and Son in particular that I own, I think if you don't have them, you're probably not particularly worried. You've probably got another good option or your squad looks better overall. You've got Trippier in defense or you've got Nunez up front, whatever it might be. You're probably not that worried, but I also think that people that have got them are not really considering selling either. So I am open to doing it with either Son, Saka, or maybe even Salah just to get some money to spend elsewhere. But they're never going to be like high priority moves to make. So I think it's just that situation. If you've got Saka, you probably hold him. And if you don't have him, you're probably not panicking either. But for me, he's going to stay this week. Son is an interesting one. Um, obviously, they don't have Madison. Lots of people now panicking about that after one game where Son didn't score. And look, I do think going forward, it is going to be more of a struggle for Spurs. Obviously, Madison was a key part of the creativity in that team. We'll have to see how they set up against Aston Villa. Will um, Lo Celso come in, for example, possibly? Is he going to be able to replicate what Madison does? Absolutely not, but it might be better than what happened in the game against Wolves. I just think after one game, I'm not prepared to make that decision. And I think that is the call. After one game, are you happy with what you've seen enough to sell someone like Son? I just think he's so good, he's still going to score goals anyway. And I don't think the Villa at home is that bad of a fixture. If it doesn't go well, and they really do look bad, then you could make a case to get rid of him before Man City away. But then it's back-to-back -back home games against West Ham and Newcastle. Then it's Forest away, Everton at home, Brighton away, Bournemouth at home. I just don't think there's ever going to be like a... A, a big reason to get rid of him like even if he blanks against Villa I will not suddenly put him on the chopping block and want to get rid of him before Man City I might do it but it's not really something I'm considering I just think Son himself is so, so good as an FPL option and I just think he will continue to score points plus as well and I'm going to talk about this a lot over the next few weeks there's a bit of fixture congestion coming up like the game for Spurs for example the game in game week 14 is the 3rd of December then it's uh, which is Sunday then the game against West Ham is on Thursday. Then the game against Newcastle on Sunday. Lots of players are going to get rotated. I don't know if Son will be one of them, especially when Richarlison is missing as well. So I just think having those players you know are always going to start, a player that's probably on penalties, um, you know, is never going to be, like I said, a priority transfer out. Also, he scored again, I think, for South Korea, even though Madison isn't in that team. So maybe he can do it for Spurs as well. It was a penalty, I believe. I don't know if he scored another goal. Um, and obviously, Palmer got him cheap at 4.9 million. No reason to move him on. Like you could look to upgrade Palmer if you've got him. But I think for me, he's an enabler to have the rest of the team. Let's get on to Matoma. He is currently flagged. I've talked about ever since I wildcarded in game week 10 that he would be going for Mbermo by game week 14. So that plan is still in place, but I might bring it forward to game week 13 instead i've got that 0.5 million in the bank that lets me make the move in one transfer i don't need to free up money or anything like that so if matoma is out this week and we're still waiting to hear from deserby i think that makes a lot of sense to bring forward a week now i know people are going to say if you bring in in burmo you've got him playing against your double arsenal defense and obviously it's never ideal when your attackers play your defenders 
but that doesn't really come into the equation for me. I guess I guess the real debate is who's better this week in Burma home to Arsenal or Archer at home to Bournemouth because I could just not make that transfer, bench Matoma and play 3-4-3 three, three and play both Palmer and Archer. And if you think Archer is better than in Burmo, then that is the move to make. Delay it until game week 14, have two free transfers, see if anything else happens. Because obviously if another midfield a midfielder got injured, I might decide to do a different move instead. But I just think even against Arsenal at home, in Burmo is better than Archer. So it shouldn't really matter that I've also got double defence. Obviously, the ideal situation would be that in Burmo, Saliba and Gabriel all score. Very unlikely, but it could happen. So that's how I look at it. Instead of worrying about the fact I've got Gabriel and Saliba, it's is in Burmo this week better than Archer. Bearing in mind, I definitely want him from game week 14 onwards. Some people have said to me, would you not consider Eze instead? of in Burmo and I do get the thinking with that because the next uh, because the fixture this week is obviously looting away my problem with Eze is the good fixtures are going to run out pretty quickly so as I've already discussed with Mark Gay they've got looting away West Ham away and Bournemouth at home then they run into Liverpool at home Man City away Brighton at home in 18 and the blank probably isn't uh, that bad but then it's Chelsea away then it's Brentford at home then it's Arsenal away so between game week 16 and 21 You've got Liverpool at home, Man City away, Chelsea away, Arsenal away. It's not great. Now, I still think Eze could be a decent option because he's going to start all those games over Christmas. He's on penalties, takes all set pieces. He's nice and cheap at 6.1 million. But I don't think... If I've only got one spot for Eze or in Burmo, then from next week, I definitely want that to be in Burmo. So it's, to me, it's not worth a transfer to get him in for Luton away than to make the transfer to in Burmo. I'd rather just make my move this week and then in game week 14, preferably roll and then be in a good position from 15 onwards. So that's why I'm not looking at Eze first. If I was dead, like, sorry, if I was dead sure that I was going to sell Son or Saka in a couple of weeks' time, or maybe even in game week 14, then yeah, maybe I'd do Matoma to Eze, and then Saka to Burma or something like that. But as I've already mentioned, I don't really have it on the radar to sell them. So yes, doesn't look great bringing in Burma to play my double defence, but that is why I'm probably going to do it if Matoma's out. If he's fit then I guess I could keep him. But I guess I was already looking to make this move anyway, so I might just use this as an excuse to make it in game week 13. And then up front, I've got Erling Haaland, who's another player that's currently flagged. And alongside him, it's Ollie Watkins against Spurs away. Now, on paper, that's another fixture that doesn't look great for game week 13. But as we know, Spurs are missing some of their key defenders. So Romero is currently out through suspension. Van der Ven is injured probably until at least January. And Destiny Udoggi pulled out of the Italy squad during the international break with a fever. Now, it might be that we get to Friday, and Postacoglu has his press conference and he says that Udogi is fine. But even if that's the case, Spurs are still missing their first choice centre-backs and they might be missing their left-back as well. So I don't think that's suddenly become a really easy fixture, but it's certainly not one that I'm worried about having to play Watkins in. So he will definitely stay this week. There's no one else that I really feel like I've got to go out and get. And obviously I've got Matoma to deal with anyway. And then in game week 14, it's Bournemouth away. So I think with Watkins, I'm probably keeping him at least two weeks and then reassessing assessing from there after those two weeks the fixtures do get a little bit trickier he's got man city at home arsenal at home in game weeks 15 and 16 then it's brentford away in 17 but i still think i've got a player that's definitely going to start all those matches villa are a good attacking team they'll cause anyone problems especially at home and then in game week 18 you've got sheffield united at home so when you know man city and brentford aren't playing in the blank Ollie Watkins has got one of the best fixtures and potentially could even be a captaincy choice. So he's got Sheffield United at home in 18. You've got Son, who's got Everton at home. I would definitely look at him as well, especially if Spurs are doing all right without Madison. And even Salah, right? He's got Arsenal at home. On paper, not a great fixture, but Salah is never going to be a bad option. So it's not like Watkins is the only option, but he is one of the top picks, I would say, for captaincy in 18. So I think I'm probably going to hold him the whole way through just because he's so... He's pretty consistent, but he's just so reliable in terms of starts and stuff like that. And that is a key thing for me over the December period. If I did want to sell him, there are all of a sudden a few more options than maybe there were a few weeks ago. Obviously, Darwin Nunez is someone that I quite like. I never seem to have a spare transfer to get him. I'd almost rather have him as a third forward than replace Watkins. But he has been getting regular minutes. He's got 10 returns in 12 game weeks. Bearing in mind, he hasn't started all those weeks anyway. And after Man City away, the fixtures are good. Fulham at home, Sheffield United away, Palace away. The problem is, I don't think he's better than Watkins this week. 
And then, yes, I'd rather have Nunez against Fulham at home than Watkins against Bournemouth away. But that's not going to be a worth a transfer. So I think the Nunez move is probably going to get put off for a few more weeks. And at that point, I'll just keep hold of Watkins. Solanke is someone that people like. Um, I would say all of a sudden, I think he's always a pretty good option. But the fact that he scored two goals against Newcastle has definitely helped people think about him he's only 6.4 million so would enable money to be spent elsewhere Sheffield United away this week is Villa at home in 14 they got Lewin at home in 17 Fulham at home in 19 you know he's going to start all those games he plays 90 minutes one day Bournemouth might get a penalty as well in which case he should take it so I like him but again unless I really need that money for another move is there any point in getting Solanke over Watkins like Solanke in his own right is a good option but I don't think he's better than Watkins if you take money out of the equation and then the other player that people are probably looking at at the moment I'm sure we're going to discuss this on the game week preview tomorrow is Isaac because how many times have I said I don't want Wilson or Isaac because when they're both fit there's always going to be rotation well Wilson is apparently going to be out for six weeks and Isaac could be back after the international break all of a sudden Isaac's minutes go right up he'd be on penalties as well and the Newcastle attack is generally pretty good but again would I trust that he's going to go and get 80, 90 minutes straight after the international break after being out with injury? Probably not. So I'd rather have Watkins. And then, okay, Isaac against Man United at home is perfectly fine. But do I want to sell Watkins before Bournemouth away? Probably not. So again, it's something for me to reassess from game week 15 onwards. Is Isaac starting all the matches? How many minutes is he getting? Because they're not going to want to lose him again, especially if Wilson is out. So it might be that he only gets 60, 65 minutes, and then they put Gordon or someone like that up, up front instead. So I think in theory, all of a sudden, Isaac sounds like a good option, but I don't think he's suddenly so good that I need to rush out and buy him. Maybe if he was on a 3-4-3, that would be different, and potentially at some point, I will look to downgrade one of Son or Saka to do that, but this week is not going to be that week. With Haaland, he is currently my captain. I think on paper, he's probably... Do you know what? Actually, I don't think on paper he's the best option. I think that's Son against Villa at home. But I think, although I'm not in a rush to sell him because of Madison, I am maybe a little bit concerned enough to not captain him. And I think Haaland at home is always going to be a good option, even up against someone like Liverpool. Now, we don't know if he's going to be fine. He is currently flab. But I've just got a feeling he's going to be all right for that Liverpool game. And he's probably going to get 80 minutes plus. If there's any doubts from Pep about whether Haaland will start... I'm probably just going to move the captain, uh, captain's armband and that will be it. I'll still keep him. I'll probably still play him as well unless Pep rules him out because we know what damage he can do against any team. It's just whether or not I want to captain him. I think I would probably just go straight to Son because of the fixture, but I would never rule Salah out even against Man City away. So yeah, we'll have to wait and hear from Pep, uh, to hear from Pep. I'm sure Haaland's going to be fine. Um, and after that, it spurs at home without Romero or Van de Ven. And then the fixtures after that get pretty good. I know he blanks an A-team. I'm going to want to hold him the whole way through. The reason that I'm open to selling Salah but not really Haaland is because Haaland doesn't have African Cup of Nations or anything like that to go and play. So he's going to be available all the time. So yeah, he's currently my captain. I might swap that. Let's see what Pep says. So that's it for this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure to give the video a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Trying to hit 400,000 subscribers before the end of the season. And of course, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about bringing in Burmo early or should I just play Archer, captaincy decisions and all that good stuff. And make sure to check out Surfshark VPN. All the links you need to get signed up are in the description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you again tomorrow.